What's up guys, Nathan here, and today I'm gonna to talk about how I got my start in poker before turning pro. You know, this is something I've never really talked about before here on the channel. I often just discuss poker hands and basic kind of strategy for small stakes games, but I've never really gotten into how I really got into this game, how I turned pro, and I know that a lot of you guys ask me questions about this a lot in the comments. So I've been kind of been waiting to make this video for a while. I wanted to kind of just be in the right headspace. I wanted to wait just to sort of ask myself, do I really want to put a video out like this? Because as you guys know, who are regular watchers of the channel here, you know that I'm not one of those guys that's trying to sell a dream or make poker seem overly simple these days, because it definitely isn't. What you're going to learn in this video is that I came up in a different time of poker when honestly the games are quite a bit easier and so I really just don't want this video to be misconstrued as some sort of inspiration for people that want to quit their job and become a poker pro because as I'm going to discuss, becoming a poker pro is probably going to be a lot more than you bargained for. It's actually a pretty difficult job. Uh, it's not nearly as, as glorious and envious as a lot of people think. And like I said, the games just are not easy these days. It's actually one of the most difficult jobs out there. So I'm going to try to give you the good and the bad. So enough build up. I started playing poker in 2004. This was right after the moneymaker effect, as it's often called. A guy named Chris Moneymaker won the 2004 three World Series of Poker for $2.5 million. This was an absolute marketer's dream. This is a guy who bought in, I think, for a $6 satellite online. He's an accountant in Tennessee or something like that, an amateur, uh, you know, and it really just helped build kind of that story that anyone can do it. And honestly, during that time, anybody could do it. It was an incredible time. The famous movie with Matt Damon, Rounders had just come out. I've probably watched it, no lie, like 87 times. I I even went around telling all my friends and family, you know, I'm gonna become a rounder. They're like, uh, what's a rounder? I'm like, it's a professional poker player. Don't you know that? And finally, this is the time when poker was blowing up on the internet. All the most famous sites that you're still familiar with today uh, were just coming into fruition during that time. So it was kind of like a trifecta, three different things. Uh, and I should actually mention poker on TV as well. They were finally, with the WPT, for example, they were finally starting to show whole cards. This was absolutely revolutionary at the time and made poker much more exciting on TV because you actually had a stake in the action. You can see what hand <laughs> this guy has that's either bluffing, you know if he's bluffing, you know if he's uh, telling the truth, if he's value betting. So I actually got my start in actually around early 2004. Like I said, this whole kind of poker boom, as we call it, had already gotten underway. And I'd actually just graduated from college. For those of you guys who don't know, I'm from Vancouver, Canada, and I had just finished my degree in history and philosophy. I had absolutely no clue what I was going to do with my life, so it kind of the timing worked out perfectly for me. Another thing is I was going through a lot of uh, personal issues, the kind of stuff that you know, life will throw at you sometimes. I got a lot of it at an early age in life. And so I was really didn't have a whole lot of direction in my life at the time. I didn't know if I wanted to continue on with schooling, go be a lawyer or a doctor or something like that, or just go try to be an entrepreneur and sit on a beach somewhere or do none of them at all. Because honestly, as I'm gonna talk about more, my biggest passion at the time actually was video games. <laughs> you know, it still is. And for a lot of you guys probably watching this video, you know, I was heavily into games like StarCraft, Call of Duty. In fact, my real dream was to be a professional StarCraft player in Korea. There was a huge scene at the time. In fact, a lot of my biggest heroes, people like Elki, uh, Lex Veldhus, who's still in poker, and a lot of the guys that originally started Team Liquid, which turned into liquidpoker.net, a lot of these guys were having massive success in StarCraft and they were moving to Korea. And I played the game very seriously and that was my goal. And then they all started getting into poker, of course, you know, and, and I was like, okay, what's going on here? But the thing is, is back then in 2004, you know, it was a different time. You know, there wasn't the money in esports that there is now. Today, I'm filming this video in 2021. That dream kind of died out as well. So it was basically, I was looking for something and lo and behold, I think it was a Halloween party or something. I was with all my high school friends. You know, one of my friends, his name's Jordan. What's up, Jordan, if you ever watch this? Um, you know, he taught us this new game called Texas Hold'em. No one had ever heard of it before. 
but um, or we didn't know how to play it anyways. We definitely heard of it that was on TV and stuff like that. And you know, long story short, he basically taught us the rules of the game. There was about six of us. We put in about $5 each. You know what, I got lucky. You know, I started running good right from the very beginning. I hit all the good cards that night, I guess, and I won the whole pot, which is, you know, like I said, it's gonna be about $30. Everyone put in $5. So, you know, that paid for the beer that night and even a, a small profit. And I was like, wow, this poker thing, it's so easy, right? So basically I went home the next day and, you know, I went to goodoldgoogle.com and, and typed in online poker and I started playing online. Now I gotta say that this is the point where I definitely made a large mistake, which is playing play money for upwards of a year, but I really didn't want to play for real money at this point. I still didn't know if it was even real. Gotta remember back in 2004 as well, you know, this is way before e-commerce was kind of a thing and like putting your credit card or something to an online poker site to make a deposit like, that just wasn't something that a lot of people were comfortable with back then. I didn't even know if it was a skill game or anything. Like I just won like some money playing for beers with friends. I didn't know if I won, is poker site even gonna pay me? There was a lot of questions back then, but I definitely had a deep passion for the game right away. I started playing it and all of a sudden I wasn't playing StarCraft and Call of Duty so much anymore because I did start winning at this game right away. And really what it came down to like I said, I was playing these play money games is just kind of, I don't know if it's kind of a personality thing or what, but I just noticed that everybody around me was just playing every single hand. You know, they were all in, they were chasing every single draw. And I, I think you still see this today if you play play money on any online poker site. My first instinct though was different, was to be more cagey and to kind of just wait for good hands. And, you know, I realized that I could get a mathematical advantage. You know, a lot of people, you know, I saw them playing every single hand and they'd, you know, they'd play a hand, a really crappy hand, like eight, three offsuit or something. Um, and they would hit trips and they would lose to me because I would wait for a much stronger hand like ace eight. And we'd both like, I'd have trips and like the flop would come eight, eight, four and they would lose all their money to me, but it's not really a bad beat. It was just that I had a mathematical advantage going into the hand and they put themselves in what we call a reverse implied odd situation where they stand to lose a lot. So I'm not trying to get all technical in this video, but just the bottom line is I realized early on that this is a skill game because you can just choose to play better cards than other people when you're going to have an immediate mathematical advantage. I really think that a lot of that might just come down to a personality type. I think that, you know, I'm certainly not trying to say I'm some sort of genius or anything. I'm certainly not, but I just think the game of poker perhaps came a little bit more naturally to me early on than it did to some other people. So long story short, this led to me winning thousands, tens of thousands, and eventually millions of these fake money play chips on multiple different sites. You know, I was playing in the very highest stakes play money games online where the blinds were like 20,000, 40,000, and I had like 5 million on the table. And, you know, I thought I was really cool, I guess. You know, it was kind of like the fake money high rollers, right? After playing these games for a long time, I realized though that I couldn't pay the rents with all of these fake money chips. So, like I said, I ended up playing these play many games for far, far too long. I definitely think is a massive mistake. And I was basically ready to quit the game. But then I saw somebody type in the chat one day, hey, we buy these fake money chips. We'll give you, I think it was like $10 for a million or something like that. And I honestly, I didn't even know if it was true, is why on earth would anybody buy these fake chips that have utterly no value? But I thought at this point, hey, I've got nothing to lose. I'm tired of playing this game. I was actually, I think, hitting the limit for the amount of fake money chips you were allowed to even have in your account. I had like 20 million or something like that. It was basically just a little bit of cost benefit analysis. And I, you know, I said to myself, you know, even if this is 50%, this is some sort of scam. Because the thing is, I had to send the fake money chips to them first. You do it like it was through some sort of website. And anyways, they would send some real money to your account afterwards. So basically it was built on a trust system. I had no way of knowing if they're just gonna take my fake money chips and I would never hear from them again. But I also realized that I was getting nowhere in life by hoarding all these useless fake money chips. I basically decided to take, I think it was about 6 million 
magazine or something and ship them over to this random guy basically who had a website and lo and behold it wasn't a joke it wasn't a scam after all uh, but 30 minutes later I got an email saying congratulations you have $60 in your poker account so that's kind of where it began so at this point I was kind of like honestly actually $60 meant a lot to me back then I was working really crappy jobs like building houses doing like forklift work at 4 30 in the morning for Sears department store if you guys even remember that but I still kind of had this poker dream and the beautiful thing at this point is I felt like I was on a total free roll I actually was because I was not risking any of my own money at all my family were very much against poker. You know, I come from a, a religious Christian background growing up in Canada, and my family were not too happy about my decision to be a rounder poker pro as I was daydreaming about. You know, they wanted me to go get a quote unquote real job, but I wanted to have a go at this. You know, I still had this dream. You know, I've always thought sort of bigger on a grander scale in life. I'm, again, I'm not trying to paint myself as some sort of genius or some sort of anything. I, I don't certainly don't consider myself to be uh, any more intelligent than anyone else. I always felt that I wouldn't quite be content in just some sort of nine to five kind of office job. You know, my dreams growing up as a kid were to be an NHL hockey player or a rock star. So I've never really had kind of normal <laughs> kind of ambitions, I guess. So I figured, look, I got this $60. I want to give it a go. I want to give it a shot. And that was what I could tell my family as well is like they kept saying, hey, you're going to lose quit before you lose all your money. And I would say, well, it's not even my money. I got it for free. It's it's like I'm playing with the house money. So that helped a lot in getting them to, to sort of get off my back a little bit. And I started playing just like the games that I actually ironically teach now, you know, in my books and everything, I started playing in the very lowest stakes cash games online, the one cent, two cent games. You know, like I said, I was kind of an introverted kind of nit by nature. I've just never been the type that wanted to get in there and gamble it up and to put all the $60 on the table and, and just see what happens. You know, I really wanted to do this the right way build it up. So I started buying, I think I only bought in for like $1 or something like that in these games. And I would simply sit there and play the same, what I called at the time, the play tight strategy at these real money tables now. This is about 2005, by the way. To my amazement, it still worked even in real money games. Now, not quite as good as fake money, games because nobody folds in those games. Uh, people actually do play a lot different when there's some real money on the line. But I was able to slowly start increasing my bankroll. I was working a full-time job. I was actually working in, a, in an office at this point, uh, working selling aftermarket automobile parts. Again, I worked a lot of crazy jobs that I didn't really have a deep passion for. But the beautiful thing about this job, it was right beside my house. So I'd literally just walk to work and I would come home each night and I would just play poker for like three, four or five hours. I would literally just have dinner and just play poker until I went to bed. I started just grinding these tables. I started multi-tabling and slowly but surely, you know, I started moving up the stakes and I was using proper bankroll management, probably actually way too nitty <laughs> bankroll management. This is before anybody was, e there were even any books or anything teaching you that, hey, you should have 20 buy-ins or something. Well, I, I was using like 50 because I was a complete and utter nit, even though I had a full-time job that was paying all my bills. <laughs> you know, this $60 was everything to me, this, this represented my dream. And that's why I will tell you to this day, I have never deposited money into an online poker site. I know that shocks a lot of people, but I have built off that original $60 to this day. It's not even possible for me to ever be a lifetime losing player because I've never put any money in. That's how precious that $60 was to me. And I slowly started building it up over the course of about a year, starting, like I said, at mostly cash games. I did play some tournaments on the sides. Again, super low stakes tournaments, $2. I don't even think I played five tournaments. I do remember winning a $2 tournament once for $864, I think it was, and that was a big positive boost to my bankroll. But uh, the majority of my play was just, you know, cash games, one cent, two cents. Like I said, playing around, I built myself up to about four tables at once, and I was playing every single night, move up to the two cent, five cent games. Uh, after a couple months after that, you know, maybe I've got about five, six hundred, or actually I think it's more like a thousand dollars 
uh, at that point in my bank account, like I said, I was playing extremely risk averse, okay? At this point, I think I had like $1,000, I move up to the five cent, 10 cent game. So it's a hundred buy-ins for that game. I think I waited until I had like $3,000 or something in my account before I moved up to the 10 cent, 25 cent. And, and like I said, on and on. I think it took me around a year before I was at the 50 cent, $1 games. I think I had about a $10,000 bankroll at the time. This is actually when I started my poker blog. Uh, this is in 2007. You can still find some of those early entries on my blog. They're super embarrassing. But at this point, I was definitely making considerably more than this office job. Like I said, it's just above minimum wage. Something like that at this job was like $12 an hour or something in Canada at the time. But each night consistently, like I said, I'm playing 50 cent a dollar, hundred dollar buy-in cash games at this time. I was regularly making two, three, four hundred dollars every single night. Well, not every night, of course, Sometimes on occasion, I would definitely have losing days or break even days, but overall the profits were consistent and I was definitely making considerably more than my job at this point. And that's the point where it became counterproductive to even have a job uh, because it was in April of 2007 that I decided to turn pro, quit my job. You know, as I make this video here in 2021, I've not had a quote unquote real job since then. So like I said off the start, I didn't make this video to sort of sell a dream here or make it sound easy because honestly guys, it wasn't. There was a lot of brutal soul searching during that first year where I definitely did have plenty of losing streaks, but overall the games also were a lot easier to beat back then. Like I said, I was literally able to play my play tight strategy, which is basically waiting for aces, kings, sets, flushes, stuff like that. And I was able to consistently profit. Now I wasn't crushing the games beyond belief or anything. I was only winning like three big blinds per hundred, something like that. But with that consistent effort every single night, I was able to slowly but surely move my way up the stakes. And so really, I guess the point of this video is just to show you guys that where there is a will, there is a way in life. You know, I definitely made every mistake in the book. I played play money for an entire year while we were in the golden era of online poker where there were literally people throwing around thousands of dollars that didn't even know the rules of the game. And then when I finally got playing, you know, I took my time and used the most nitty bankroll management of all freaking time. When again, I should have been playing much, much higher stakes games to take advantage of that easy money back during, you know, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, when the games were literally money falling out of the sky. But anyways, I guess really just the point of this video is I wanted to show you guys that it's also okay to think outside the proverbial box in life, to go after your dreams, whether that's poker, whether that's, you know, whatever that is. There's a million and one ways, obviously now these days to make money online, whether it's being an influencer, or cryptocurrency, drop shipping, I mean, you can do anything these days, especially online with the power of the technology that we have these days, but it's not easy in the beginning. You know, I had everybody telling me in the beginning, this is a ridiculous idea. This is the stupidest thing you've ever come up with. You just graduated with a college degree. What on earth are you doing throwing your life away gambling? This is what everyone told me. But, you know, I was a kid with a dream at that point. I was young, I was only like 24 years old, 23 years old, something like that. You know, I was kind of just rolling with the house money and I wanted to just give myself six months a year and just see if this thing could work. And remember, I also had a full-time job at the time, so I wasn't relying on poker to pay my bills or anything. Anyways, guys, that's kind of the longest story of how I got my start in poker. It really was about 2004, and then, like I said, it was in 2007 that I eventually turned pro, went full-time, started traveling the world a couple years after that, uh, started writing books a couple years after that, as well on the game, coaching, all that stuff. But it was really 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, roughly in that period where I was playing the most as a full-time online pro. And I will get into that in a follow-up video. If you guys want to see more, if you enjoyed this video, let me know 
your thoughts in the comments below if you enjoyed this. And like I said, I just hope this video was helpful for a couple of you guys out there. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Like I said, most of the videos that I make here are actually like poker strategy videos or review hands and stuff like that. But I wanted to toss in sort of a sit down video like this from time to time to just give you guys some sort of deeper insights on somebody who's kind of been through perhaps where you are shooting to, to get to one day, who's been through becoming a poker pro and stuff before, and really give you kind of the straight truth on the good and the bad, which, you know, a lot of people just tell the good these days. They don't tell a whole lot of the bad. So I will get into that in the next video if you guys want to see it. So make sure you let me know your thoughts in the comments below on that. And as always, if you guys want to know my complete strategy for crushing the small stakes games, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. It's called Mouse and Profit at the Micros, and I will leave a link to that in the description below. So anyways, guys, I hope that this video uh, was helpful for some of you guys out there. If you're still watching, thank you so much. I truly appreciate all the support over the years. I really couldn't have done this whole thing without all you guys, especially the blog and everything, with the support that a lot of you guys have given me out throughout the years, especially when things were not going well, when I was ready to quit the game. And I'm gonna get into all of that in the next video if you guys wanna see it. So anyways, guys, I'll leave another video up here that I made recently that I think will help you guys out as well. Thanks a lot for watching. This has been Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com.